The purpose of this tutorial is to introduce the heating design calculation in Design Builder, which enables you to determine the size of the heating plant required to meet design winter conditions. It can also be a really useful tool in the analysis of building performance through heat losses and gains from individual fabric elements or for each zone in your model. This means you can quickly check the impact of changing aspects such as insulation levels to help you iterate to the optimum design solution, providing quantitative data to support your cost-benefit appraisal. During this tutorial I'll discuss the context underpinning the heating design calculation, the key parameters involved in setting up the calculation, and finally review the calculation results before and after making changes to the building design. Heating design calculations in Design Builder use a constant steady state external temperature set to the winter design external temperature which is taken from the weather data set relative to the location of the building. The wind speed and direction are set to design values and there is no solar gain. No account is taken of internal gains such as lighting, equipment and occupancy and heated zones are heated constantly to achieve the heating temperature set point defined in the activity tab using a simple convective heating system. The calculation does include heat conduction and convection between zones of different temperatures. Before opening the heating calculation tab you must ensure that the correct location is set. You can check this at site level in the location tab and here you can see that the London Gatwick Airport template is set with an external design temperature of minus 4.8 degrees C. You can select either the 99.6 or 99 percent confidence level in the design data here. Selecting 99.6 percent i.e. a higher confidence level means that there will be a 0.4% chance of more extreme winter weather occurring. You should also check that infiltration is properly defined in the construction tab as this can have a significant impact on the results. You can see here that the model infiltration option is selected set at the default value of 0.7 air changes per hour. If you've previously carried out a heating design calculation and none of the model data has changed, the re results will be displayed as soon as the heating design tab is opened. Otherwise, the calculation options dialog box will be shown, enabling you to define the calculation parameters. You can enter a calculation title if you wish and as a general rule you should leave the default calculation options set unless you have a good reason to change them. You can select the most appropriate control radiant fraction from the temperature control drop down menu here. The different options may give fairly significant differences in results for example calculated plant sizes will normally be lower when air temperature is selected as a controlled parameter. A very useful discussion on the impact of using the different types of temperature control is included in the help file, which can be accessed by typing in the text calculation options here in the help index. And here you see the discussion on temperature control. If your model includes natural or mechanical ventilation systems and their associated controls you can specify whether or not you want to exclude these from the calculation here. They are of course included by default as they can significantly increase the heating load in a building. Note that this comment regarding infiltration always being included is only true 
when infiltration is switched on in the construction tab. The design margin is set to 1.2 by default which means our plant sizes will be based on the calculated heat loss plus 20% to cater for any additional heating capacity required when the heating system has been switched off for extended periods for example overnight or over the weekend. It effectively reduces the preheat time required to achieve comfort set points at design winter conditions. The design margin can be increased or decreased if desired based on the system design but note that some national energy codes penalise excessive design margins. As with all modelling you should generally not store surface level data unless it's specifically required. Increased data generation and storage can significantly slow down simulations and is generally not possible in large models. You can include the results in building and block totals and averages for each area such as unoccupied atria and roof voids by selecting this option but by default data from these areas is not included. Now that we've confirmed the input parameters we can run the calculation by pressing OK. The calculation then iterates to a converged steady state heat loss for the building. I'll now review the calculation results. The temperatures are shown here in the top graph, starting with the internal air temperature, which is the controlling parameter, and indicating the resulting radiant and operative temperatures. Note that the internal temperatures are best viewed at zone level as the value shown here at building level is an average for the whole building. Going to the ground floor east office we can see that the averaged operative or comfort temperature is around 2 degrees C lower than the zone set point because air temperature was set as the control parameter. The operative or comfort temperature as it's sometimes called is a combination of the air and radiant temperatures and is a measure of the average perceived temperature in each zone. The external design wind temp winter temperature of minus 4.8 degrees C is shown in the blue to the right of the internal temperatures. Going back to building level the heat balance graph provides a breakdown of the heat gains and losses in kilowatts for the whole building. To the left we have the heat losses totaled for each of the fabric components such as glazing at 17.86 kilowatts and walls at 3.35 kilowatts and the infiltration and ventilation losses at 27.37 and 39.55 kilowatts respectively. Note my earlier comment regarding the potential significance of not including infiltration and ventilation where they're relevant. To the far right we have the total heat input of 90.56 kilowatts required from our heating plant to meet the heat losses at design conditions. I'll now show you how quickly we can make some fairly significant changes and quantify the benefits in terms of improved thermal performance. Going back to the construction tab I'll load the best practice medium weight template. This will load higher performance constructions such as the roof and walls and immediately you can see that the default infiltration rate has reduced from 0.7 to 0.3 air changes per hour. Going to the openings tab 
I'll load the triple glazed low E glazing template. And now rerun the heating design calculation. I could of course have changed any of the fabric properties individually if I had a particular interest in say analysing the type and thickness of the wall insulation to achieve the optimum cost benefit balance. Reviewing the graphs we can see some marked changes in the results. The losses from the glazing and the walls have reduced by around a third and a quarter respectively to 11.1 and 2.47 kilowatts and the infiltration losses have reduced by more than half to 11.73 kilowatts the ventilation load remains constant as this is set to minimum fresh air per person so as dictated by occupancy density and the specified minimum fresh air rate. The total impact of these changes is that the building heat loss has reduced by around a quarter to 67 kilowatts. This will clearly reduce the heating energy consumption and associated operating costs and CO2 emissions from our building but will also reduce the size and initial capital cost of the heating plant required to maintain comfort conditions. The summary tab provides us with a tabulated breakdown of our steady state heat losses and the required emitter capacity, which includes the design margin for each zone and block and the total for the building. It also shows the comfort temperature achieved in each zone when the air temperature is controlled to the set point in the activity tab. Once the fabric properties have been optimised, the heating design summary data can then be used as the foundation for the heating plant design. In this tutorial, I've looked at the context and some of the headline considerations underpinning the heat loss calculation, discussed the key input parameters, and finally reviewed the heat loss and plant sizing results. We also saw how easily you can undertake iterative analysis to help optimise the building's thermal performance, which in turn enables you to minimise operating costs and emissions and specify smaller plant sizes with reduced capital cost.